guys, I'm Molly Sanyor. It's Monday night. This is Throwing with Molly, episode 42, with my coworker Amy Bainham Chaplin. I tagged her. I'm gonna get her out in just a second, but first, I want to just remind y'all of a few things. It was so fun to go pre-live over on my new private membership account, Throwing with Molly. If you haven't hit request to follow, do it. It's gonna be a lot more behind the scenes, tips, tricks, challenges. I'm doing a cylinder challenge. Cut open your cylinder. Use the hashtag Throwing with Molly. Cylinder Challenge, but it's TWM instead of Throne of Molly, because that's long. So hashtag TWM, Throne of Molly, TWM Cylinder Challenge. All right, so let's just get Amy out here. Come on out, Amy. Cheers. Cheers. Yay. Thank you for having me back. Amy was already on, like, a previous episode. It's on my past uh, Throne of Molly's on my website and YouTube channel. So last time, Amy was going to do um, a spirit jar. And y'all have requested for lit it forms, so tell them what you're going to make tonight. So I'm actually hopefully not going to get distracted by her to make lit it form. Yeah, um, we might. <laughs> I'll show you two different kinds of lit forms if she doesn't bother me. While I'm, I'm going to bother you. <laughs> well, it's going to end up like a bowl. We're going like to drink and we're going to cheers, and it might end up like a bowl. <laughs> but uh, my idea, my goal is that she'll throw this lit it spirit jar and then when she leaves I'll trim it and fire it and then we'll have it at school. I didn't tell you that part. Oh, that's my didn't. idea. So then every morning we'll be like, what's in the jar? We can leave <laughs> each other notes. Oh, God. We have the best job. <laughs> okay, cheers. You have clay right beside you. You have bats under there. Gotcha. I, there's a request also for sphere forms, which I don't really love sphere forms. They're really challenging, I think, to make sphere forms. To get the belly out, to bring back in, and not collapse. And I think that was the question is, this person always tries to make a sphere form and it always collapses. So I am going to try to make a sphere form that's thick on the bottom that I can carve away the foot later and pull a leg. So let's right. do it. Cheers. Cheers. Right back at you. It's Iran or Iran 65. All right. So... So Amy hired me at Trinity, or you were part of, you were That's basically my boss them. when I got hired. And when I got to Trinity, I had never really used bats. I had never used a clay mixer. I had never used a Giffen grip. What else? And anyways, Amy is so patient and like shared all the knowledge. So I'm excited for this hour with Amy. <laughs> I'm not as high energy. As we're yin and yang. We're yin and yang. We have a great time, but we balance each other. Right, why are two oh, sorry. No, that's right, left. Oh. Which it might be going lefty. See what the, it is. The, yeah. Do you want it lefty? No. Amy is a lefty, but she throws righty, and I love that about her because when the kids are like, "I'm a lefty," I'm like, "Oh shoot," because I'm yeah. a righty teaching a lefty. I'm like, Amy's a righty or lefty, and she throws righty. We'll just teach you, and then they yes, do it. Because I wasn't smart enough to change all of the directions to the opposite. If you throw left-handed, God bless you. Which, it looks like I'm throwing left hand. This is my right hand. Everything is backwards in this because we're selfie mode, so we can read your questions. Oh, look at that flag. Can you tell what that flag is? It's green. Ireland? Oh, guys, at 7.20 and 7.40, I'm going to have an alarm, and that's when we'll map where you're from, and we'll answer the questions you sent in. So at 7.20, 7.40. Righty gang. What you doing? I think somebody said, yeah, I'm ready. This one also has a loose bat pen. Sorry. Okay. So, sorry, I always feel so bad at that loose bat pen. It's okay. Hello, guys. Thanks for tuning in. So if you're tuning in, this is my coworker, Amy Bainham Chaplin. She does a lot of sagger firing. If you don't know what sagger firing is, it's an alternative firing method. You just use chemicals, but click over on her page and... Stop telling people to go to my page. It's four years old. <laughs> she has a page because I made it. And I was like, Amy, how can anyone see these beautiful bots you've made? She's not on Instagram. She's not on Instagram anywhere. So I made her an Amy Bainham Chaplin Instagram account. And you can mm -hmm. see what work she does. From four years. Oh, Sweden. The flag. Sweden. Looking forward to see what will come of the wheel tonight. Oh, wait. It's back at you. Argentina. Guys, Argentina and Sweden, you either have to remind me or tune back in at 7.20 and 7.40. I'm going to clean my hands and map out where y'all are from and ask some questions. All right, so you're making spheres and I'm making spirit jars. Spirit jars, 
come from all different cultures. They have different variations on them. You have to talk louder, I oh, think. Oh, sorry. They have different vari variations on them. And basically, the idea behind them is that it's a lidded form, somewhere with a little hole in it. doesn't have to be noticeable. And the point being that you put these spirit jars next to your bed when you're sleeping, and your dead ancestors... Jackson Milchalk. Sorry, says, hi, Miss Chaplin. Do you know Jackson Milchalk? I do. Hi, Jackson. She's talking about her spirit jars. Sorry, go ahead. Anyway, your ancestors Sorry. can come and visit you and have a place to rest. That's the whole point of spirit jars. All right, jar. make two. One for you, one for me. If I'll trim them. If they're sitting at school, well... Should we make three? One for school, one for you, one for me. <laughs> Should I, I? I'll do a sphere form. I'm doing a sphere form because y'all asked about the sphere form. And I think, so the cylinder challenge, TWM cylinder challenge, hashtag, where I'm asking y'all to cut it open and share it. Um, you want a flat bottom. This guy, I'm creating a curved bottom for the bottom of the sphere. And then I'm focusing on creating a cylinder on the top portion. And then I'll shape it and neck it back in. That's what I think. As far as lidded forms go, um, if you're making a gallery, which is the little space on the lip for the lid to rest, you want to, instead of having nice follow-through with your pull like you have always been taught to do, you want to stop maybe a half inch before the top so that you have a nice thick rim of clay to make that gallery. So you'll notice that my rim is going to be fairly thick. You know, I always called it a galley for the longest time. I never called it a gallery. Because again, if you're tuning in, Amy and I are like yin and yang. Not only did she choose white and I chose black, but like, can you hear our music tonight? <laughs> I always use Pandora. <laughs> and tonight's Pandora is channel Grateful Dead, Greatest Heads. So it's a variety. And y'all know me, mine is Beyonce. So we have a good time at school, bouncing back. Anywhere. We do kind of, um, what was that one day we had compromise on Disco Friday? We did that one time. Yeah. And I think we both had a ball. Yes. I would be up for Disco Friday because I think it encompasses a lot Everything. of music. Yeah. 70s, 80s, 90s. Yes. Disco is very yeah. universal. Are you guys going to Encica? Good question, Small Town Clay. You're my favorite. Oh, Millie Whitmore Hart, you're my favorite neighbor. But are we going to Encica? So the first time I'd ever even heard of Encica was when I began working at Trinity, and Amy was like, so do you go in to Encica? I'm like, what is that? And then you're like, you've got to go for professional development. I went by myself. I had no idea. What, I didn't know what I was going to get into. And then I went, and I was like, wow. <laughs> That was amazing. It's like the clay mecca of learning. Workshop after workshop after workshop after workshop. And you're just like, boom, my brain can't hold anymore. And all the free swag. You love Posters, the free swag. The I'm like, how am I going to carry these back? And I brought the you tote some. bags, the t-shirts. Oh, Kaylee Atul. Oh, hi, Miss Chaplin. Kaylee Atul. Hey, guys. These are our students. Kaylee Atul has an ID art show this week. Yes, Kaylee. she does. Can't wait to see all the work you've done, Kaylee. This whole two, a two-year process, right? Two-year process. Well, so, you're not. So let me also say this. I teach the beginner students at our school. We have a two-ceramic teacher program. It's like the best program I've ever seen. I feel like I hit the job lottery. It's amazing. And I teach the beginning level. And then from beginning level, which we call elements, you can go the best splits. And then you can take... Um, the next level studio workshop, which you take over and over. You love clay, you want more clay, and I teach that too. So I teach beginner, and like I just want more clay. And then where you go, like I want to go IB Art, which is the International Baccalaureate program, which is like worldwide known, same curriculum. And Amy teaches that sculpture advanced class, which applies to get into this IB program, which is a two year program, which Kaylee Atul, her exam is. When did she sign up? I wonder if it was this week, next week? No, it's got, it better be this week. This week! <laughs> so this week, a lot of her students tuning in have their big IB art show set up. Yep. Yep. All right, so I'm going to make a... Wow, you're good. I'm going to make a space for um, my lid to rest. So do you have a regular lid still? Yes. 
So, you sorry, that one's like curved. Is this one more straight? Like, what old? Wow, this one's better. Okay. There's one more right there, and if those this one work, work, I can go take a peek. This will work. So I like to use a rounded wood stick, oh. and like with everything well, else okay. in ceramics, there's a million ways to do something. Um, this might seem a little awkward too, because most of you are going to be right-handed. So I just suggest supporting your hand. This is one time I'm glad I'm left-handed. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to push the inter half of this thick lip that I've made. So I want to go. And you can kind of see mine's slow. too thin to do this. You have to really compress it. And you have to think about this when you're making the like when you start off because you really do want that thick lip. Um, and you want a lot of clay there because if you need to trim it to make your lid fit better, you've got uh, that clay there. Oh, I never mention that to my students. Sorry. So but I'm just gently pressing down halfway down this thick lip. And it might seem a little rough right now, but I can go back and trim and it. And trim it. Right. I love a pre-trim. I never think to trim my gallery. My galley, which I called it for years. Look at that. Okay. Well, and I guess, so I've thrown like a cylinder. My walls are pretty evenly thin. My bottom, instead of the cylinder bottom, flat to vertical, is actually kind of curved. And I'm going to belly out to about here. That's going to be my widest part. And then, so I'm going to slowly come up, put a little width, slowly come up, put a little lift, do that gradually, and then neck this back end, but getting the water out first. So that's what I'm doing. So now, once I've made my gallery, I'm going to take my measurements. So these are calipers. These are also calipers. Um, but this is basically a ceramic ruler and you use it to, um, for lots of different reasons, mostly to create lids. I use them to carve feet into bowls so I know exactly where the horizontal and the vertical start. Um, they're a great tool for measuring wet clay especially. So you can use them a couple different ways. You can use them like this. Um, in this case, the most logical way is to cross them this way. I'm going to go over the widest part, the center of the bowl, and I am measuring from the inside of the gallery to the inside of the gallery. And this, you always want to err on the side of being too big so that you can always trim the extra away. But you really want to try to get as close in there as you can. I mean, we really are yin and yang because I would have always used these. <laughs> I would I always use those because school. then I have like the, the both measurements. Yeah, I no. see I'm old school. I like wooden tools. She likes plastic tools. I love, I love our yin and yang. It works. It works. We're lucky. Okay. Okay. So now I have to make my lid. And I still have these fake nails which are growing out so I'm having a little hard time with the texture on the interior but I'll just smooth that out with a sponge later. out there are there out there with fake nails good question know. good question good know. question i want to know active too. potters with fake, fake nails. nails because i just found out that fake nails is something that you can continue like you don't just get them and then take them off like they grow out and you just fill them i didn't know that what you need a, just... a, somewhere to place it yeah i know okay well i also can get us a wear board it's okay Because I know she needs, so when you throw the lid at form, you want to keep it close, too, so you can check your measurements. All right, so I've kind of bellied out a little bit, and then um, I'm going to start necking it. So I don't have any water in there. I'm going to get my hands wet. Oh, I do see a little slip, so I'm going to get that out. Hey, Sir Whitmore Photography. Sweet. Oh, and look at Wave's little pigeon pottery and B underscore E underscore L underscore I underscore A underscore S underscore S. How do you say that? Belias. Belias. I don't know. I don't know either. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Third with Molly. Episode 42. Waves, Esther, TP, ceramics. So Amy and I have a great time at work every day, and I'm so excited. She's my guest tonight. She was on here last time. I was going to do um, spirit jars because we're going to do lit it form. She'll request lit it form, and you did again tonight. And we're going to focus this time because last time I think I distracted Blair was here last time. We were drinking, which we still are. Cheers when you're done tapping. I was nervous. Nervous. Tonight we're not nervous. We were just throwing. Ceramics by Kadisha. I think I'm saying it right. I, that's a Kadisha. Are these, anybody, any potters with fake nails coming on yet? 
Nobody said anything yet. Yeah. Does anybody else have fake nails out there? I did at least get the neutral color. I got rid of the hot pink. So even though they're in real life, they're very obviously not my nails. <laughs> but you can't really tell. <laughs> I do miss Miss Kal Kowalski. I, I we've chatted. I need to practice saying your name. Your art room, Miss Kowalski art room. She has fake nails. All right. Hello. I don't even do nail polish. Me either. <laughs> but I have for spring break. I don't even have real nails. <laughs> I have to keep my natural nails short because they get in the way. I've never had my nails. My nail people were like, you want what? I was like, I want the fake nails. I want the point, I want the glitter. They're like, but you don't get nails. I was like, I want them. But you I, have nail people. I wouldn't dare with fake nails. I feel they'd break while wedging. The worst has been recycling clay because the suction of the wet clay. Nothing else has been as bad as grabbing wet clay that suctions and you feel like they're gonna rip off. That's the worst. I can't believe we haven't found one in the recycling. Hey, look, I have them all. I haven't lost any. They haven't even shipped. <laughs> all right, talk about your lid. We're right, lids. Always a good idea to make two lids for every four of it. So, since I've made um, a, That's a gallery, good tip. That's a good tip. I want. Um, I'm gonna make a low, shallow bowl form, and that way I have a lot of control over what kind of handle I want to put on it. I can put. Um, I can make something out of a different material, like stones or sticks. Or I can pull a handle, or I can sculpt a handle. Um, so it just gives me a lot of options. So I'm just, um, I always have trouble judging how much clay. I always go for more. Cause you can always try to have too much and too little. Yeah. Oh, look, somebody wants to request a live video. You know what? I'm not requesting lives because it's hard for me to do, but over on my new private membership account at Throne of Molly, I can't wait to go live and just accept you potters out there and like talk clay with people from Sweden. Y'all that tuned in earlier, I remember you. So yeah. So I love the tip about if you need one lid, you throw two. Um, what am I doing? I kind of threw a cylinder, I started with a cylinder, threw around bottom because y'all had asked about sphere forms. So this pot is actually kind of, it continues to curve the whole way around. So depending on how you trim it would reveal the sphere. That's how I do it. I know there's potters who like you throw it and it looks like a sphere. I enjoy trimming, so I always, my curved bottoms tend to look like cylinders on the wheel until I trim them. But a trick to getting it to neck back in is taking that inside hand and kind of lift, and then that outside hand kind of pushes that clay over. And when you neck in, it kind of condenses the clay, so it's a good idea to kind of neck in, make it tighter, and then pull, and then neck in and make it pull. Whereas when you belly out, or stretch it out, it thins that clay there. That was a trick I used to do when I couldn't really throw and I'd have really thick pots, I would just push them out. And that's why I had a lot of bowls, to be honest, at first. We talked about my lack of skills earlier, and it's okay. Practice, well, practice, I practice. I think, it, you know, the thing about clay is it never gets boring. The yeah. idea is you never, never it. run out, you know, you never get to that point where you make the perfect pot, you know? So it's always that challenge. I think that's part of why we like it. Yeah, totally. The endless challenge of clay. And I think some people are just starting out in clay and you're looking to your left and looking to your right and judging yourself based on people around you. Mm -hmm. And that's just silly because I like to compare that to going to the gym. Like you're at the gym and you think, oh, they're looking, nobody's looking at you. They're all looking at themselves. Same thing on the wheel. Like nobody's looking at you. You just gotta practice, practice, practice. Yeah. They're just, looking at their own pots. Yeah, you gotta get in your own place with that. Um, so lids, this, the type of lid I'm making is a low wide bowl. And they like to get S cracks in them. So what I really tried to do when I first opened it up as a low wide bowl is really compact that inside. Just coming in from the center back out to like three o'clock or so and just really pressing those clay particles down. And in theory, oh, in theory they won't crack. Well, let's talk more about that. We have a question, TP, <coughs> how did you guys become art teachers? So guys, that alarm at 7.20 and 7.40, we're gonna have an alarm and that's our question time and map out where y'all are from. So I'm gonna clean my hands. I'll get back to this pot. Amy, you keep throwing. Okay. And let's talk clay. Let's ask these questions and knock y'all out. So how did you want to become an art teacher? Um, because I really wanted to keep 
working with Clay, I had done um, an internship with an artist at a gallery. I knew this was a life that I wanted, but I needed a little bit more stability. And I had a degree in education. I loved working with kids. And art was a little bit more freeing than um, some of the other things that Clay was doing. Totally. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that question. And here are more that y'all sent in. So I always like to send out the questions for like what questions y'all have. These are the ones that were sent in. This one is from at Willow Weep Storm. Do you throw away students' artwork that was accidentally left behind for the day? Well, that depends on our mood. Um, and the day. <laughs> <laughs> because. And like if we walk outside on Friday afternoon and there's 13 pots on bats that somebody outside left the out studio. there. So. Like that, that sucks out loud. And we get in trouble for leaving it messy outside. So. Don't get us in trouble. So if you leave your pot outside, we will that gets recycled. But we have a we have a policy with bisquare. We unload all the bisquare. It goes on the shelf. We say, guys, bisquare, clean your bisquare, put it in your cubby, bisquare, bisquare. And then when we unload the next bisquare, what do we do first? We have a process. Mm -hmm. we, do. we take the old bisquare and we put an X on the yeah, and some of the kids are like, oh, there's an X in my pot. And we're like, guys, it burns out. It's fine. But it get, lets us know, oh, that one's been sitting. And I usually try to wait for three Xs. And then, because you feel bad throwing away kids' artwork. You feel bad. But um, but it accumulates, and they don't want it. Well, so, yeah, on another level, like, why should we care about it if they don't care about it? Yeah, they don't care. Why should we you care? Know? So um, three Xs, you're out. So, yeah. Or we let kids try test glazes on those pots mm -hmm. with three Xs. In fact, there's a piece sitting around that is not signed, and you always sign it like you're famous. And there's a piece that's not signed, and, and Graham Henderson Bess is keep saying, can I take that? Can I take that? Can I take that? And I'm like, at least wait until there's an X on it. He's like, it's been there for like a month. I'm like, plagiarism. Plagiarism. But testing glaze, too. So true. Love. Thanks for the idea. Okay, so another question. Ooh, this is from Chaz Sutton. He's one of our students. How did you get interested in ceramics? I took a class in college, and I and I loved, loved, loved my professor. I still love her to this day. And it was like all my frustration in art. I knew that I loved art, but like when I was given a piece of paper and markers, I couldn't make it come about. And then in clay, I could make what was in my brain come about. And I never had really pursued 3D before. Did you ever write like art history? She's really good at art history. Did you ever write about art? Oh. I feel like you're very academic art wise. That's again our unit. Sorry. Um, and I, when I realized I could take a lump of clay and make something I could use, mm. and I'm a cook and I could make a dish for my dish, mm -hmm. and it's, this is a major in college? Okay. Yeah, the idea of being able to use a piece of art every day was, was very it's, intriguing because I started out as a total functional potter and I still love making functional wear. Yes. Um, also, start telling us where y'all are from. We're going to map you out at this little 720 mark. And then we'll take a break at 740, map you out, and ask some more questions. Where did the marker go? Um, how about, oh, and y'all sent in at, how would you say that? Bikushwe says, really struggling to get sphere like shapes without having the rim collapse. So don't over love. Over loving is a phrase that, let me turn my ringer off as my family is about to group text. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know what's up. Um, don't over love. Don't use too much water. Don't over love. And do you ever throw standing up? And I, we'll ask the other question. I have before. Um, a lot of potters throw standing up because they feel like it saves their back and it's easier for them to brace themselves. And it's really easy to do with a wheel. Um, you know, you just lift it up as far as you need it. I should try it. I pulled my back out the other day. North Dakota, Long Island, Telluride, Salt Lake City. I think for beginning potters, it might be extra frustrating because you can't awesome. brace your arms on your legs and stuff you have to sort of brace it with your core so I think that can be a little harder yeah mm. Oxford that's in England, England right no. okay I got you Oxford hi Molly hey Abrat Lima Ohio all right you tell what you're doing here what are you doing with your oh I'm doing so so I have my lid that I was compacting the bottom of 
several times so I don't get an S crack because they like Salisbury, S crack. Texas. Then I like to take a measurement just to see where I am. So clearly I need to pull this out a little bit more, but not too much more. So I'm going to be really conscious and mindful with this. Scotland part. and Spain. Glasgow, Scotland. Benidorm, Spain. I know where you are. Where is it? It's north of England. Near mm -hmm. Ireland. There's Ireland. Scotland, come on. Wait, turn around. Way up. Right Scotland. Now. There's England. There's Ireland. Oh, let's go! <laughs> let's go! Okay, gotcha. Mom, Dad, all the money spent on my education Don't was tell them. It. Don't tell them that's worth it for me. So practice. back to lids, just keep taking measurements. Okay, thanks for telling us where you're from. And if you are doing lids, you just need a caliper. You can't really make a, well, you can find a way to make a lid with that one, but you can use that type or this type, and you're taking one measurement. With this type, this measurement equals this measurement. So it's, I don't know, I like it. All right, mine, I'm throwing, it's going to be a spear. So here's another trick to sewing, throwing a spear, is the pre-trimming with a wood knife tool. So this looks kind of like a cylinder. On the interior, it's it's curved the whole way, continuous curve. So I'm gonna trim it. Com I was gonna keep this really thick so I could pull feet, but I was also gonna show you about the spear. Who's with me today? This is my coworker slash boss slash friend, Amy Bainham Chaplin. She has an Instagram page at Amy Bainham Chaplin. She does sagger firing. She's a local potter. She's been a ceramics teacher for decades. She's had work all around, she's given workshops, she's been to all the Nsinkas. We're gonna not we're, all of them. We're not all of them, but Some we're gonna we're gonna do an Nsinka. We need to figure that out. Guys, yeah. Start sending us we wanna do we last Nsinka we went to Pittsburgh. We had so a ball. Fun. Mind exploded with information. It, in Sika is this weekend for those of you having fun out there. Hi. Is it in jealous? Minneapolis? Is it Minneapolis? Okay. But it's 2020 be in Richmond RVA 2020 in Sika Richmond yeah. 2020. So we definitely are gonna be there, and we now that we've been to them and we've had fun, we want to do a presentation. We want to be presenters. Yeah, I think we should do. What did I tell you? From from curriculum, curriculum to, to craft. craft because she's so academic and she knows all the the like art history references and the cultural meanings and the oh well you do this that means this and. That and I'm just like, oh, did you share it on Instagram? Did you make a video? <laughs> did, did you Photoshop the lighting? You know, so to go from like how you know, just to blend it all our curriculum and share it with y'all, right? Like, what is students sort of, should get out of a program? Well, and I think to a little bit of philosophy on the, um, you know, there's a there's a certain level of pride I think that potters have in this long-standing tradition of skill that we pass on and that it's um, traditional and yet it's always evolving and it's always mm -hmm. new and changing and Indianapolis. artists, artists, well, this, is, this has been a really fun year. If any of our students are watching, it's been a really fun year for me because this year marks the year that the eighth graders, the youngest grade that we have at our school, those eighth graders are now seniors. So I've watched at a least full rotation. a full rotation. Like I remember when these seniors had never touched clay, when they didn't know what they were doing. And now to see them semesters of practice and practice and exploration later, I mean the growth, it's exciting. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I think that's a hard part with ceramics too is that it's – it's just like a sport in a lot of ways. It's practice, practice, practice. And you just have to let the idea of product go. Yes, for the so process. long. And it's really, that's really hard. I think it's really hard for our young generation. They either let it all go or they don't care at all. And so I think it's finding that balance that can be really tough. And seeing the improvement. I think it, like you fail and you want to quit, but like when you're forced yeah. to stick with it, and people tell you, oh, that's too thick. Like Brian Flood, Brian Flood, if you're out there. Like, I just can't stop thinking about Brian Flood because are so light he's, he's got an Instagram page, and I would tell you what it is. I know his name is Brian Flood, and it might be Brian Flood Ceramics. We teach at high school. I teach the beginners. She teaches the IB, like the highest level. What is Raccoon Fired? We'll talk about Raccoon. But Brian Flood is the student who, as an eighth grader, 
he loved Clyde. You could see him love it. And then like he had these ideas and he would grow and he would grow. And his latest idea was the sectional pots, which is hard. David Camden did them on here. And he was doing them successfully. And then it's like you still pick at them though. And you're like, okay, well you did it, but now they're heavy. Oh, you did it, but like you're not timing your connection. And like here he is, a senior, about to have his show, making pots mm -hmm. like this big, but that feel like a pot this big. And you're like, oh. mm -hmm. yeah, it's just amazing. It's great. Yeah, and I tell I tell my students, especially my advanced students right now, who have a really strong skill set, but their ideas, their skill set hasn't caught up with their ideas yet. That every pot, whether it fails, it explodes, it collapses, every pot has something to teach you. You just have to think about it and spend the time. Like, okay, what happened here? And then make sure you don't do it again. <laughs> right. JT Morris is tuning in. Way Hi, back. JT. He tells me his, his name here is JT Morris 8, but he's really like JT the 18th. Totally agree. Students find it hard to let go or they just let go altogether. Yeah. That's why I'm thankful we have a semester, because it's like, I kind of know in my head, like, oh, you're struggling today. I don't care. We have, like, eight more weeks. We'll get there. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Like, everybody has a day. Everybody has a day when it doesn't work, and, like, those days come, and they can be, like, earth-shattering and make you want to quit, but, like, I know you're going to be back tomorrow. You have time, and you're going to get there. My, how are you pre-trimming? I usually only pre-trim the bottom, but it looks like you're going a bit higher. What is the difference in these techniques? Okay, so this one, if you're tuning in, I was kind of making that sphere form. And a lot of my sphere forms or any bowl form look like cylinders. So I pre-trimmed, I got rid of this little bit, but when this is done, I'm actually gonna pull the thickness and make legs, like freestanding legs, like pull like a pull handle. So I realized, okay, wait, I need some of that thickness. I can't just pre-trim it all off. So I pre-trimmed and then rolled it back under like a thick coil and then tomorrow or maybe the next day, I don't know. I'm going to pull that thickness. I'm not going to trim it. So it's really thick. I'm going to, yeah. Good question. It's so awesome that you all teach pottery. I know. We have a blast every day. We scare each other sometimes in the mornings. I've shared that before if you follow, if you've been following for a while. JT Morris, another thumbs up. Sergio, thumbs up. Um, I'll make another one. I'm going to make another one because something I tell my students, if you want one, you practice that form. So I made one sphere-shaped form. The next one should be better. The next one should be even better. Continuous growth. Well, it also helps if you're really struggling with a particular form to sketch that form over and over again. And I'm going doing this way. I really should be doing this way. Sketch it like you would throw it. Um, even if you just do a profile of the pot over and over, getting that curve. Once you've seen it, your hand's done it. Um, it it does become easier um, to just practice over and over. And another good trick, the first time I ever heard this, I was like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What? It's really true. It's like when you're falling asleep that night, like go through the steps. I tell beginning potters this. When you're falling asleep, go through the steps. I get my clay, I wedge it, I get my tools together, then I center it, here's how I do it, and like visualize going through all of that. And then it will help you remember and it will help you fine tune all of those little moves that make the difference. Somebody has asked before, like, if I always sit down with the plant. Oh, do you speak any Spanish? Hola, como está? You adora o servicio. We are adorable ladies. Uh, what else does it say? Thank you. Um, I should know. I don't know. I can't see. Gracias. I'm basically throwing blind. <laughs> are you throwing blind? Amy wears glasses. I probably should, but... Hard eyes back at you. So Amy is throwing, if you're just tuning in, happy Monday night, Throne of Molly, episode 42, featuring Amy Bainham Chaplin, my coworker, boss, friend, local potter, extraordinaire, instructor. Ah, man, right on the money. Woo! So Amy's been using these calibers to take measurements of her base, which she's made a gallery to hold her lid. This is the lid. It's going to go upside down. So this is actually an upside down four. Yeah. So I made two of them. Just oh wait, that's right. That's okay, I was thinking you had already made a lid. Yeah. So you were just chatting away. Okay, so here's the thing too that is actually good about this process. Because, so, okay, so on Throne of Molly, people come and throw, and then I usually trim it. But Amy, for her handles, because if I put a handle on, it would be like my handle. Because, you know, you're individual to your own handles. But she kind of just uses stones. She uses stones. And sticks. For, and sticks. Any advice for, for taking students... 
any advice for talking to students about their first explosion or loss in the this kiln? Hi, Miss Sanyer. Hi, Kari. Oh, Kari. You know Kari. Hi, Kari. Kari. We love um, well, I think you prepare the kids for... Amy has a good saying. Before too. it happens. And I never say uh, this to the kids, but she, Amy's got a lot of like good one-liners. That I'm like, um, and this is, I mean, I guess it's true. It's what I was always told. <laughs> <laughs> the Native Americans always said, I if love a clay, it. if a pot explodes or cracks, it was the spirit of the clay wanting to be free. Because they, Native Americans, think of clay as the flesh of Mother Earth. I love that. Spirit. So that's so kind of like helps. kiln gods and things. You so can have kiln gods. You can say a little prayer to the kiln gods, little kiln idols. Um, but I think the best thing you can do is just prepare them. And um, I know I worked for a potter one time. I would worked all week on these pots. And then the last, on Friday, he's like, let's go outside. And he made me smash them all. And I couldn't understand why. And he's like, you can't get attached to them. Because with ceramics, something's going to happen at any turn. You know, those of you that work in a community studio, somebody can instantly bump into your pot. They can, you know, load the kiln wrong. It happens. And it's just the nature of the beast. You yeah. have to be philosophical. That's that. kind of like another way we're yin and yang is because we'll have an explosion and Amy's like, the spirit of the clay, what okay. is we free? And I'm like, your pot was too wet, it was too <laughs> thick, and we fired it too fast, and we didn't preheat it, and it just, boom, exploded. My favorite thing is when you say to the kids, <laughs> Well, is this hollow, right? And they're like, oh, oh yeah, it's hollow. Oh, it's hollow. And I'm like, I don't see a pin hole. It ain't it's hollow. Oh, guess what, guys? We unloaded that kiln that we knew you didn't have a pin hole. And guess what? It exploded. There's that. <laughs> We've had a lot. I think, though, that's learning, though, as a teacher and as an artist to kind of reflect on why things would explode. And not it's a not experience. about the feelings about like oh you're you're upset that your pot broke but like why did it break so it doesn't happen again so it's always a learning tool and we did one time we had the kiln loaded with the plates sack 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 and guess what every one of those plates shattered we don't um, stack the plates we don't stack the plates you get like maybe foot to foot lip to lip that's it new layer I love the service of you and I'm also a potter craftsman I admire very sensational. Parabens. Thank you for translating. Was that a translation from the Portuguese? Thank you. Thank you for watching. I can't tell y'all how much I love Throne and Molly because it's fun to talk clay and go live. And y'all tuned in from Portuguese or Portugal. <laughs> the spirit of the clay. Thanks, ladies. It's a good one. It's true. Hey, he's got a lot of good, um, you say strong like the bull. He's strong, strong like bull. Okay, well, that's not academic. That's from some, like, but it's Zoolander a movie or something. <laughs> strong like bull. Which, by the way, Amy is starting her whole yoga program at school. Another way we're yin and yang. She's like, okay, guys, the Buddha is singing. Um, yes, you're welcome. So what are you making? Another linnet one. Well, I was yeah. going to talk, since you're pushing this yeah. cheese academic, um, <laughs> you know, with ceramic, especially with those of you out there that are teaching or are students, it's so technical, technically driven. And then, like, in our IB program, it starts to get content driven. Like, what is your message? What are you trying to say? Why did you do it this way? Why did you pick it that way? So trying to get kids to think about both technique, like, oh, I'm learning how to make a lidded form, but also getting them to think about, like, what, what does this express? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you willing to put in this time? And um, I will often say to the kids, if you could stand on the highest mountain and yell one message out to humanity, what would that be? And that's a good jumping off point to think about what your content is. What would your message be? I'm still trying to figure that out. I'll let y'all know. Let me think about what your message would be. Well, your we, message we would figured be... out your message in what? the car in Baltimore, remember? What? I... She like everything has to be white. Everything has to be clean. Everything has to be fresh. And every Monday, she comes in <laughs> and was like, new week! Fresh week. <laughs> and I think that's why she has this white aesthetic. I mean, even her studio is completely white. Um, and she wears, like, all black every day. Time to question and map y'all out. Tell us where you're from. I do, wear, I do love having Amy to help me self-reflect on, like, what my message is. But I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just making it. She's it's, like, no, no. There's a reason That why. is reflecting your emotion that you've been bringing. Like, can't you see? Like, obviously, that's why you do. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Thank you. What else you got? Our 
right, so where are y'all from? We'll map you out. New Hampshire. And then we have four more questions to ask, too. And then I'll get back to my spherical form, which needs a little help on the interior. Well, and New Hampshire. What? Does she want a closed sphere? Do you want a closed sphere? I don't know if they're watching. Because you can always. Right, just New Hampshire. Let's get to a question. I love a question. Because that's one of my favorite things about being a teacher is the questions. And when, when then I don't know and then I get to learn. Huge. Okay. Let's see. Students, you have no idea how much you teach your teachers. Yeah. Continuous learner. It's a real thing. All right. From Cat Snub. Are your summer... Summer. Are your summer workshops for beginners? It's for all ages. I would say high school and up. I had a high schooler come and sprinkled in it. Any? Oh, do you have to have experience? No, I love a beginner. More growth, faster. So no experience needed. Just be in high school or older. Um, Tabby Lewis, thinking about taking a position as an art teacher. Do you have any advice or tips? We're actually hiring a 2D art teacher, and we're going through this process of the hiring. So actually, do you have any tips? It's really fascinating. Um. Closed sphere, they're asking. Okay, well, I should have done it a little differently, but I'll try to close this one. Um, Thinking about taking a position as an art teacher, do you have any advice or tips? Yeah, I think it's important to um, really understand the philosophy that the school, the administration has about art. Is it an elective, and are you okay with that? Or is it something that the administration really values and realizes it's a part of, of our human experience, and are they going to be supportive? Um, and that's that's gonna be hard to find. It's a shame, but um, I think you're a lot less frustrated if you're looking in that direction, or at least you make it clear that that is what you want to do coming into the school is to, to be an change artist, those attitudes, support artists. Because basically, you're teaching these kids how to communicate, and you're teaching them visual literacy, and so. Um, you know, you're, and the thing about art is that it teaches all the subjects at one time. And where kids can't succeed in other ways, they can, they can meet with success in the art room. Yes, but also depending on if you're a first year teacher, you're like fresh out of college and does the school program, like I know I've hit the job lottery. I know it. I tell my kids you're spoiled rotten and I love it because I am too because I'm your teacher. It's the best. We have a great school, a great ceramics program, like I, it's amazing. My first teaching job was not this. It was eight years at a different school where art, it was a public school, so the public school system doesn't value the arts like our school currently does. And, but I took that job and I was excited for that job and I loved that job for eight years. And then it was like, this opened up and I was like, oh. So I also think you have to ask yourself, like, how bad do you want it? And just get your experience where you can. Like, Amy also taught in a juvenile delinquent center. Lockup facility. Lockup facility. Like, get it your, it depends on how old you are and, like, where you are in your experience. If you have no experience, collect that experience for your toolbox. Go teach as, as many diverse mm -hmm. locations as possible. Because that's going to teach you. Yeah. To, and make you better. And teaching at community art centers can really help you if you're still being like, hey, is this something I want to do? I like that visual literacy. Are you saying that? Or no. You know that? Oh. Add Maddie Hurley, but instead of A's, there's X's. Maddie, I'm guessing Maddie Hurley. Well, I mean, it's true. That's why, you know, you can look at the artist whose language you might not share, but you can still understand their message. It's beautiful. I love working with Amy. It's not just my school. I was telling her when she came over, I'm so lucky. Not just for our school program and the facilities and the students, but for Amy. She's my boss. I work with her. Okay, every I am not her boss. And I am the head of the department the, in which she works. Which I report to her and then she, you know, it goes up. But she's my first report to person. So, like, you know. And when I was a first year teacher at this new school, I never taught ceramics. I kind of sucked as a ceramic artist. Amy gave me all the syllabus, all the curriculum. She's like, here, just do this. You're fine. And, and if you don't want to do this, you don't have to do this. But this is just so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I just... How many times did I say that to you? Enough. I was like, okay, you're right. Let me just... And over the years, there's still evidence of what you gave me, but I've also, like, Made it changed your own. it yeah. a lot. But it was so nice to be like... Okay, so somebody asked for a closed form. So what I'm doing now, there's no water on the inside, and I'm going to gradually neck in, neck in, neck in until it touches. And then once it touches, it's basically an air bubble, and you can take a rib and kind of shape it because the pressure in the inside will allow you to push back against it. I probably should have kept it all way more narrow. Yeah, so I might neck up a little more because I didn't do this thinking it was going to be a close one. 
very eloquent visually as well as vocally. Do, I, I think we're talking about Amy's spectacular with art, and she's amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. Well, I really like what I do. Like, I, I hope, you know, I, I try to walk the walk and talk the talk as best I can. Oh, and somebody had asked about Raku. Oh, Raku. Which, that's another reason we're lucky. Like, I'd only ever done Raku at special workshops, and then I came to Trinity, and um, they were Rakuing, and now our school has supported really, with this, like, the propane system that they've installed, they really support that. Like, they just are really supportive of any ideas that come through the program. Just wondering, how old are you, Molly? I'm 36. About to be 37. I'm maybe like 36 and a half. Not. 36 and a half, maybe. What is it? March? In no. April is my half birthday. Um, so someone was asking about Raku. That is an alternative firing process as well. It uses a special kind of glaze that you fire to 05. Um, and then you also, it's a very fast kiln firing. You want to do it in a propane or a gas kiln. Which is why it's so fun. Yeah, and you bring the kiln up to 1,800 um, degrees fairly quickly, and then you remove the pots when they're red hot, and you put them in a combustible. Um, actually, it depends on the glaze. It's some you can put in water, others you put in sawdust, and you put in pine needles. Um, and then the glaze reacts with the smoke, and um, where, where there isn't any glaze turns black, and then depending on the raku glaze, if you have a traditional clear crackle, you'll have a white glaze with a black web sort of design, um, but then there's also metallic glazes, and so those can give you your blues, almost like an oil, they look almost like an oil spot. So you need special glazes, special kiln. Um, you can get raku clay, which is, has a lot of tooth to it, Grog. Um, a lot of grog in it, but we we don't want to mix clay bodies at school because that's a nightmare. So we um, we raku with um, a column six, one eighty one white stoneware, and we really don't have too many issues with that. No. So in me, I'm closing this form. I don't know if you saw. I took a throwing stick. At some point, you can't get your hand on them in there because your goal is to close this. So if you get, keep getting your hand in there, the lip stays open. So you try to narrow it, and then I can't reach in there, so I get this throwing stick up against the rib. I'm kind of pushing into the rib, curving back over, and then making sure there's no water in there. And then just gradually, as I neck in, I lift, I put my middle finger in, hook it under this lip, so it's in and then hooks. And then this finger is gonna push that clay over. So it's kind of like, here's the hook, and then this finger just pushes that clay over. And then it gets so close that, and I have this little extra bit that you just kind of squeeze it so close together that it closes and then that rips right off. And then the form's a little funky, so you can take a rib and now that it's an air bubble, you can just kind of press right back against it and kind of shape that sphere. And then, because when I threw this, I didn't open vertical like the cylinder challenge, the Ernest Molly cylinder challenge. Um, this has a curved bottom so that I could trim this curved and then I could match the curve on the top. So that's throwing a closed sphere form. And then I just let this rib kind of compress that shape. And then, like we try to tell our students, make sure if it is a closed form and you're gonna fire it, there's a pinhole. Um, is it safe to drink out of a Raku mug no. or eat out of a Raku fired plate? No, most Raku pots have lead in them. No matter what they tell you where you bought it, Raku is not food safe. And all alternative firing is not. None of it safe. is, or any, um, Glazed ware from Mexico. I would not. Drink what would you do that. with a, the sphere? Says Maddie Hurley. Thanks for the question. Um, you can make several of them in different sizes and create a Zen garden. It also, if you follow, um, I think it's Hanny Gold Art. Hanny Henny Gold. I follow her, and she's amazing. She throws closed forms, and then she takes a wire cutter or no is it a wire I don't know but she takes the clothes form which is one she cuts it and now she has two and then she weaves pine needles to make like necks and collars so she multimedia's it there also um you can also carve them out and make lanterns too yeah and really I don't make clothes forms because yeah I like to make stuff I can either use with a sucker and I would use it so when I'm gonna do that's how you do it and I'm gonna open it back up just cut that out 
And I'm gonna make it so, just like this one that I made, I'm gonna trim it and pull some legs and have it like a stand-up base. Guys, thanks for watching, it's Monday night. We have school tomorrow. We have a whole week of school. We do. And it's fun because now that the weather's gonna be nice, we'll be able to do more um, raccoon firings. I'm gonna be starting with my advanced class in the next week or two. Yeah, Amy's program, she kind of gives her kids assignments like, they did Hans Kolt, Hans Koper. Koper sculptural pieces where they throw pieces and assemble them together and then they do lit it forms and then they do alternative firing. And she's really setting those kids up for like a palette of tools to go on to the IB classes which she teaches. Oh, so you're doing a different lid, different yeah. lid option. All right, so this time I'm going to make a flat lid that has um, a little piece that fits inside it. So it's gonna have a little bit of personality difference. It looks different on there than it does here. Does it have a terrible bridge right here? That's just my imagination. Nope, there you go, you got it. And then mine has a little like high low, so I'm just gonna needle cut it off. And somebody said, Amy, what are you making? I think you just told them, but yeah, did you? I'm gonna make another lid form, but this time I'm gonna make a lid that is like a cat, no, a flat lid that fits in here. So I just want to see what my inside is like, how big that is. And then this lid will be flat. So then again, I have a lot of options for handles and such. And me, I'm making like a sphere base with a really thick bottom that I'm gonna pull feet from later. Nice earrings, Molly. Gosh, you noticed. Thanks. <laughs> Guys, I used to love earrings. They're one of my favorite accessories since I wear all black. And then I realized that this ear piercing, the slit, I shouldn't wear earrings. These Shit are clip-ons. These are clip-ons. <laughs> oh, my mom's got a whole bag of those for you. Does she? <laughs> Probably. Will you bring me a big gold pair? Okay. I'll ask her. I Holly. bet she does. Oh my gosh, the energy would be so great. Amy's mom is a gem. Her name's Polly. My name's Molly. I've never heard of pulling feet before. Okay, so I have a piece here, I should have brought it down, and it was basically a sphere with pulled feet, and I told Amy before we got started that I used to do that because I couldn't trim and my pots were so thick that I would just carve away some of the thickness and then pull the other thickness. I'm supposed to be using a towel and not wiping them up. Oh, the it's paper. whatever, you've got, you got whatever you need there. So I'm, I've been inspired by my old pots that were done unintentionally, and I'm gonna intentionally do them now. I have a wheel and have a huge kiln. I realized I cannot power at my house. So I was looking for alternative fire methods. Well, you're going to need a kiln to bisque. But anyway. do you, Skylar? Yeah, Y'all have been following. Most of those pieces exploded. I, I, think we, I don't think they were fully burned dry. I think there's a way. <laughs> if you're patient, I don't think we were patient, and we've been taking his non-fired pods. They're all unfunctional, non-functional. You can't. You can make a pot at your house and fire it low and slow for a long time to, I think it was 1250 degrees Fahrenheit. Or you can befriend a potter and be like, I'll <laughs> clean your studio if you let me fire my stuff. Or that. Um, or, you know, look into getting the power. Because if you can get stuff bisque, then you can do a lot of alternative firings. Um, there's a ton of things you can do in a trash can. I live in the city, and I do a lot, all my staggering fires in a trash can. I bought it Lowe's, and it wears out after a couple, you know. Maybe next maybe time. Maybe several uses, and then I just go buy another one. You just put holes in it. Next time you do a stagger fire at school, I'll go live on the Throne of Molly private membership account and just hit request to follow that. It's We go live at school a lot more because it's a lot less informal over on yeah. Throne of Molly. It's a lot more behind the scenes and just tips and tricks. So if, if you need an alternative firing method, but people will probably be more likely to bisque fire for you than to glaze fire. So it is a good idea, just find a local potter, get yourself bisque fired, and then you can alternative fire. Nose itches. Good question. And Oh, I think we had one more question over here. Did we talk about what made you decide to teach art? Doctor at Dr. Dole, doc, Dr. Doe Lizzie says, what made you decide to teach art ceramics? 
Why not? That's the coolest. <laughs> That would be awesome. I'm following and love the content. Thanks for the advice. Yeah, so follow over there. And Amy's curriculum is at the point of doing those alternate firings. So probably in like a week or two, we'll be outside and I'll try to go live and we can show you. Because yeah, like Amy really just uses easy, accessible materials and Super makes cheap. beautiful pots. Look up the RVA clay tour. Her She has a home studio that you can walk around and like see where she creates, see her little zen garden and see her Sagar Pyre pots. Sagger <laughs> fired pots. Sagger fired pots. Say that ten times fast. <laughs> and yeah, if you do look up RVA clay tour, she's on the cover. The turquoise. The on, she's got turquoise on her pots. It's beautiful with like oranges and browns and blacks and whites and yeah, it's really pretty. Non-functional, but pretty. So you're making... So I'm making a flat lid with a flange. Flange. So I just kind of made a flat piece. And now I took my inside measurement. You can't see over here, but I took my inside <laughs> measurement. So you're taking your measurement. You always keep your bottom close when you're making the top, the lid. And again, you, you have a little bit of wiggle room with trimming. So I just kind of made a visual with my calipers as to where that edge is where I want it to fit. And then I'm just gonna put my fingers on either side of it. Uh, I don't make lids like that. I love it. This is, I mean, I learned a lot from Amy, but now I'm still learning. Any tips for a right angle shoulder? I think just use the right angle of your rib tool. And don't be afraid to go in the pot and really push that outside clay. Like a right, and then instead of using the rounded edge, you could use that, get a 90 degree. This song reminds me of my dad. Oh, cheers, Frank, he's on our cups. Cheers, let's cheers each other. Oh yeah. Cheers, so Monday night, they're in my episode 42 with Amy Bain and Chaplin, my coworker, boss, and friend, clay enthusiast, fellow local fodder. Um, and then we had a, a last question, and then we would have answered all the, thanks for submitting the questions. At Fate Men's, I think I'm saying that right, um, for trimming, which one is better, Gif and Grip or Trimming Bat? I think it depends on the form. I've gotten a lot of messages. If I can only get one, the Gif and Grip or the Diamond Core Tool Sticky Bat, what should I get? And I say get both. They're both an investment. You can't use a Giffen Grip for the pot that you could use the sticky bat. You can't use the sticky bat for what you could. So, and if you can only get one, just pick one, add it to your arsenal, and then when you can get another one, get the other one. I think they're both it's, awesome. It's a huge game changer. Yeah. Huge. Huge. What you need? What you need? Do you have a pin tool? Oh, uh, yeah. They're kind of funky. You should probably get a new one for right there. I stole yours, I think, somehow. Yeah, you did. Sorry. So, this is going to be a little too wide. So I loved having Amy, two minutes left. So Amy's been on doing um, lit it form. So if you missed it, go back. This will be up on my website and YouTube channel. It's episode 42. And I've been doing kind of sphere forms. I've been leaving the bottom thick to pull feet. And if you haven't yet put a follow request for my new private membership account at Throne of Molly, We'll probably finish up live over there for a bit of an after show as we wrap up these pots that we've been throwing. So put in a like at, or a request to follow and we'll keep up finishing these pots over there. But we still have about a minute left. This is so fun. I always come in. Monday is excited for Third Mind. It was really fun to be at school and constantly like, so guess who's my guest tonight? <laughs> guess who's my guest? And all the students are like, it's Miss Chaplin. All right, we use foam batting attached to our bats to trim. The batting is free from packages. It, it's a good alternative. That's yes, great. and we've used um, foam bats that we've actually paid for. Either way, foam, it is a great option to trim, totally. But it's a game changer having a Giffen grip or the sticky pad. Like, you sh could really trim with lugs of clay, too, or using chucks, and there's mm -hmm. endless ways to trim. So, they're just tools for your toolbox, and, if you can afford them. And as a young potter, it's the Giffen grip seemed like such a huge investment, and finally, I was like, I'm, I was losing so many pots at the trimming stage because I was trying to get that much more off and really trying to improve my craft. And 
when I made the investment, I have never looked back. And never. The is, you have it forever. You have it forever. And they're a great company. One of their it's sons is the company. tiny house guy, Zach, Zach Giffen. He's the carpenter on the Tiny carpenter. House Nation. All right, we got to cheers. Ten seconds left. Thank you so much for coming. This is Thank so fun. Thank you for having me. Can you see you at school tomorrow morning. Cheers. Thanks for watching. See you next Monday. Um, I don't even know my guest yet, so tune in Monday. See you then.